Hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel. As you guys know, if you're watching this the day it comes out, we have Ultimate Cups still within BT15 pre-ban list format. That is correct. And I would be robbing you guys of information and not doing you guys a service if I didn't say that Apoclamon here is literally the best deck to play in a pre-ban list BT15. You would be doing yourself injustice to play anything else, in my opinion. I'm definitely considering for the ultimate couple if I have time to play on Sunday, and you guys should. It's either play this or play something to counter it. There is no other way around it. It is literally the best deck in the format. And this, this one is my build. I like it a lot. You let me know what you guys think in the comments, and of course, please like and subscribe to the video. The eggs are fairly simple, just four copies of Demi Mara from BT15 on the leash and it's card level five to draw two cards. Uh, it just gives you draw power and it gets your level five or higher pieces in the trash, which are incredibly important and you'll see why soon if you don't already know. On the rookies, we're playing four copies of the recent starter deck Gobamon, the one that when attacking once per turn, draw one, discard one. Also gives you a starter main phase gain of memory if your opponent has a Digimon, which is pretty cool to have. Now we need Goblinmons because we gotta play four copies of Goblinmon X Antibody. This is the one from EX5 that is going to one come March 1st. And for a really good reason. When you evolve it or play it, you'll top four cards of your hand, add a card of the Guru Mon or X Antibody in the name, and uh, bomb out the rest if you add something to trash card. So ideally, you play this or evolve it on your Goblinmon, you grab a Guru Mon card, and then you just trash one level six Digimon. It's exactly what it's there for. Also has the alternative effect that prevents battle deletion once per turn by returning two non digi cards from your discard to the bottom of your deck. So that does come up occasionally, not very often, but if you need it, it's there. It's, it's pretty okay. Uh, on to more rookies. We're playing three copies of Alekmon on the Legion Elite Warrior Puzzle 3 Digimon. This is really important because cards like Psychmon, Solarmon, Chikrimon will see play this format just as a counter pick two um, Apoclamon, like people in the red hybrid decks might play Solarmon, or people in their, you know, Anubis decks and their Malga decks might just play Psychmons because you can get away with it, right? So three copies of Lekmon is there to help blow up those annoying floodgates that would prevent you otherwise from playing the game. So yeah, you need at least three in my opinion. And then we have a couple limited cards, one copy of Gobamon on the Leashian here, we'll draw two discard one, and then the limited Gobamon from the old starter deck, of an attacking draw one, discard one. It is not once per turn. So 13 rookies, I think is good. It ensures that you open one pretty much every hand, which is important because it needs to go on your Demimera egg, which is important because you need to discard your level sixes. So that's it for the rookies. The champion lineup is actually pretty straightforward. We're playing four copies of the new starter deck, Gurumon. When the Javali draw one, discard one. When attacking Inheritable, draw one, discard one. Also in security, if you do hit it in security, you can play Goblin or Tamer card Matt Ishida from your hand of trash while paying the cost. It does come up because you will have Goblinmons in there. You might even have a Matt in your hand or trash, and it can just play it for you, which is extra pressure, which is pretty good. Uh, honestly, really good card. We need four of it so that we can play at least four copies of EX5 Grumon X Antibody, an incredibly broken and busted card that is going to one on March 1st. When did your draw two, discard two, and then you gain memory if you have Groom on our body in the in the traits, which is very good. Costs three to evolve on a level three or zero on your Groom on. Yeah, it, trust me, there are plenty of times to just evolve for three and do the thing. It is really powerful. It also has the same old turns inheritable that prevents battle deletion once per turn. However, you will never ever use it because we're not playing the level fives in this deck. So there you go. It's just there for the win to draw and draw two, discard two. That's all it's there for. And finally, one copy of Eismon Scatter Mode on Deletion, draw three, discard two. It's a staple card for drawing cards and discarding cards. It's at one already, so that's just how we can get to play. All right, on level sixes, I'm gonna separate this in two categories. One category are Dark Master cards and then non-Dark Master cards. We'll start with the best Dark Master card, Metal Seedramon. It is there for the Inheritable Blocker. It has Inheritable Blocker, that is huge because you'll be having blocker on a 15k body, which is crazy. Has an on-player when attacking effect that returns one of your opponent's levels five or lower Digimon to the hand, which is cool. Um, and then your turn, it can't Digivolve unless it's only a white Digimon, 
which is interesting. So you can only evolve into white Digimon. Fine. End of opponent's turn effect, leave this Digimon, then you may play one Digimon card Dark Master's trait other than Metal Seed Digimon from your hand, without paying the cost. You will never use this effect. The li literally, the only reason you use this card is for that blocker inheritable, and occasionally the on play that your Pokemon will get to use. That's all it's used for, that's all the Dark Masters are used for. It is just the inheritables and the odd time you get to use their on play. The second best card is Three Piedmon. As Retaliation Inheritable, which is actually kind of useless, but really cool if, uh, you know, you have to block and I guess they're bigger than you, I suppose. But then it has an on-play effect that pops an unsuspended Digimon, which is pretty good. So that for, it's for that reason alone, it's the second best one. And then we're doing three copies of Puppetmon. Piercing Inheritable will never come up, but on-play will turn upon suspended Digimon on the bottom of the deck. There's no level restriction on this. It can bottom deck a seven, which is why I'm playing three copies of it. And finally, we're at two copies of Machine Dramon. On play, B to evolve two, and the Inheritable is Reboot. In my opinion, it's the worst one in the deck, which is why I put two copies of it. D to evolve two just isn't that good when you can just blow up the threats or bounce them or whatever. And Reboot's only good if you're attacking, which really you're never gonna do. I think I've attacked like twice of the Pokemon ever. It's not something you regularly do. All right, that's it for Dark Masters. We do play a couple of other level sixes that are really good to have, such as, Managermon from EX3 has an on-play effect that says uh, all your opponents Digimon get security minus one till the end of the end of their turn. Global effect, kind of like Venusmon. The rest of the card is irrelevant. You'll never use it. It is just there for Pokemon to do a holy flame on your opponent's board so that they can't kill you. And then we're playing two copies of Craniumon BT13. It's on play until the end of the opponent's next turn. This Digimon isn't affected by the effects of your opponent's Digimon. So they can Gaia Force it, but they can't Omnimon it, or whatever. You know, insert Digimon that can get deal with the card here. They have to use an option to get rid of it, and uh, that's it for a turn. It's going to be very hard to get rid of for one turn, unless they're playing, like, Security Controller, something like that. So that'll do for level 6s, which leads us right into our level 7, four copies of Apoclamon himself, the pizza-loving, depressed... Crazy person. That's a Pokemon. So this thing costs 15 to play. When you play it, you can pick up to three Dark Master cards from with different names from your trash, and then attach uh, treat them as sources for Pokemon. And for each one you use, it costs four less to play in. So effectively, you want to play Pokemon for three with three different Dark Masters as the sources. So. A boss monster that you can play for three effectively explains why people are playing Psychmon and Jakurimon and all that nonsense. But it doesn't stop there. Oh no, no, no. This is the reason Pokemon is banned. End, or sorry, going to one. End of your turn, once per turn. By placing a level six or lower card from your trash as this Digimon, Digimon's bottom source, activate its on play effect, and then you mill two cards from your opponent's deck for each card in the sources. So, for example, you play it properly, the way you're intended to, it's going to have three sources already, and then you use the end of the turn to attach a fourth source, they mill eight cards. And then if you use something like Cranium on that makes it really hard to deal with, it's probably surviving the turn, which means next turn, you'll end your turn, attach another card to the sources, and then mill ten. That's stupid. That's very dumb. <laughs> it's actually insane. Um, and then you get an on-play whenever you attach a 6 to it, which is just adding insult to injury, in my opinion. Yeah, this card is incredibly powerful, and I think you guys can tell why it's, the, why it's going to 1. You don't even need to really attack in this deck. You need to attack with your Gurumon stack to, like, maybe draw this discard some cards. But, like, you're not winning the game through attacking your opponent's security and beating them that way. You're beating them by deck out, which is disgusting. So that's it for the Digimon. Four Pokemon wraps it up for us. We want the Tamers next. We're playing four copies of Analog Youth. On play, real top three cards of your deck. Add Digimon to your hand, trash the rest. That's pretty good. Then all turns, one of your level five higher Digimon with sources is deleted. You suspend the Tamer, hatch an egg, gain a memory. Apoclamon will always have sources. So if they do blow it up, you get an Analog Youth trigger, which makes it harder for your opponent to play the game, especially if you have multiple Analog Youths, which you usually do, hopefully. So yeah, it accelerates you by putting two cards in the trash, which could be level sixes, and then you get that that sort of interruption when they pop your Pokemon stack. 
Very strong card. And then we're at one copy of Matt Ishida. It's a memory tamer starter main phase. You gain a memory, or go to three memory, and then when you trash a card once per turn, you suspend it to gain a memory. So it gives you a little bit of extra memory to play the game. One copy of Matt is really nice, simply because you're playing um, you know, cards that discard cards, you might as well gain memory. Also, the Guru Monster that card has a Matt target if you need to do it. So that's pretty, pretty good. One Memory Tamer is nice, because if you have a Memory Tamer, you can play two Pokemons in one turn, which I've done, which is disgusting. And you basically win the game, you mull 16 cards. It's, it's insane. Alrighty, on to the last three cards of the deck, we're playing two copies of Death Claw, which is a delete when you're level 4 lower Digimon to pop something level 4 lower. Again, another answer for those annoying pesky floodgates. And on top of that, Death Claw on a Lekmon is basically a 2 for 1 sale. They might decide to play two rookie floodgates on you. Death Claw on a Lekmon pops them both. And you get that nice Demi Mirror trigger as well. So Death Claw is amazing. And the last card in the deck is something I'm trying that I really kind of like. I'm loving this card more and more the more I play it. It is Lament of Friendship. This card, it, when you have Matt on the field, you can play it without the color requirements. It doesn't, it's irrelevant. And when you activate it, you return a Digimon card from your trash to your hand. The rest of the card is actually irrelevant. I'm not going to read it. And in security, it activates the main effect. You use Lament to add a Pokemon from your trash to your hand. Because sometimes you might not draw a Pokemon, but it might be one in trash because your opponent blew it up or because it was in security or something. Lament actively acts as a fifth Apocalypse because it's going to one, right? Clearly you want to play as many copies of it as possible. And like worst case scenario, maybe you're starved on rookies or something, or Gurumons or whatever, you can add one of those back to your hand as well. But nine out of ten times, there's Apocalypse. And that is going to do it for the deck profile today. Apocalypse is incredible. It is truthfully, honestly, the best deck of the pre ban list BT15 format and you'd be foolish to not either play it or expect to play it because you'll run into it and you'll need to know how to fight it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments and I will see you guys later. Goodbye.